This is Cutie Clinic. I'm Jack Cush with Room Now. Cutie Clinic is brought to you by Room Now Live. It's coming up in a few weeks. It's a meeting with great speakers, really novel subjects, but you know why you don't want to miss this? This is a meeting unlike any other when it comes to discussion. At least 25 to 30 percent of the time is with you and the speakers discussing the case. Q&A, panel discussions, polling, it's highly interactive. It's made for either a virtual or live meeting, and you can be virtual or live. Today's case is periorbital edema. What's it all about? A 19-year-old African-American gal presents to me with a positive ANA and periorbital edema. I mean, and she's really got this redness and swelling of both, both eyelids with a fair amount of edema. She really has no other systemic manifestations. Um, on laboratory testing, they found an ANA, 1 to 160. The CK was 900, and the aldolase was 12.3. Everything else was normal. Acute phase reactants was normal. You know, complements were normal. Um, you know, the question was, does she have maybe lupus? Does she have myositis? Is this juvenile dermatomyositis? They sometimes have... Um, you know, heliotrope uh, rash over the eyelids, and sometimes that can lead to both not only erythema, violaceous erythema, but also edema. Um, so we actually then went ahead and got an EMG, and the EMG was um, myopathic, low amplitude polyphasic, some insertional activity, and we said, well, this is probably um, juvenile uh, dermatomyositis. And let's, she didn't have Gottron's lesions or the other classic lesions of dermatomyositis. But nonetheless, we went ahead and started her on, uh, I think, very modest doses of prednisone and like um, modest doses of methotrexate, like 10 or 12.5. And she was doing well. She had very few symptoms. The methotrexate and prednisone made the eye swelling go down. And I was following her, hadn't seen her for about six months because of COVID. So she, I see her about three months ago in a tele uh, video visit. She says she's doing good. She still denies any weakness. Um, the eyelid edema is kind of gone. Um, she's moving around. I make her do some, you know, jumping jacks and, uh, you know, m motor activity things. It looks like she's fine. So we get some lab tests. Um, she waits a while to get the lab test, and a month later I get the lab test back, and the first one showed a CPK of 15,000. The second one, on repeat, shows a CPK of 23,000, and an aldolase that was like 38 to 40. Well, obviously panic sets in, call the patient, she denies weakness, rain outs, fever, rash, dysphagia, shortness of breath, um, you know, it's really all kind of shocking. No trauma, no exercise, no intravenous drugs. Uh, another round of testing, tox testing, um, TFTs, usual things looking for sort of toxic myopathies, nothing. So we undertake aggressive management of her uh, inflammatory myositis. We could have done biopsy at that point, um, and I chose not to. I thought it was I, the numbers were too high for me to be screwing around with this. Um, she did have an MRI that did show muscle edema, although she had no, again, no weakness, and that was muscle edema in her deltoids uh, and upper arms that was done. So she gets put on higher dose methotrexate, split dose, 20 milligrams a day. She gets put on leflunamide, 20 milligrams a day. That's my go-to regimen. Yours might be methotrexate azathioprine. Some others like to use methotrexate or calcium neuron inhibitor like cyclosporin. Some just really, really high dose methotrexate and really, really high dose steroids. Oh, and she got really, really high dose steroids. So I trained in Dallas with Dr. Morris Ziff, the ACR's first gold medal recipient, an icon in the field of rheumatology. And there were certain Ziffisms about certain disease management. Dr. Ziff, you know, a masterful uh, basic scientist and researcher, was pretty astute as a clinician. And one of his rules was, Newly diagnosed inflammatory myositis gets 80 milligrams of prednisone a day.
I do it all the time. It works for me. I don't like to keep them on 80 milligrams of prednisone. Uh, and so I put her on two weeks of 80, two weeks of 60, two weeks at 40. And that's when she returns to me after taking about a month to six weeks of methotrexate and Areva 2. What's going on? She says she's dramatically better. So again, a young um, teenage uh, African-American female, she's kind of muscular. She's not skinny, but she's not fat either. Um, she denies any symptoms, but when I treat her, she says, oh my God, I feel a million times better. I didn't realize what was going on. I'm actually much stronger. I'm much more mobile, etc." So her CK went from, what was it, 25,000, 23,600 down to 1880. And her uh, aldolase from 38 to 5. So she is much better both clinically and laboratory. And we're only talking about four to six weeks of therapy. The bottom lines I want to leave you with here is, number one, the Ziphism, newly diagnosed 80 milligrams a day. You're not going to see a study that compares steroid regimens. Someday maybe we, we might, but... I, I like 80 and then I get to 60 and then I try to taper them rapidly because um, one of the things that's often not spoken about is the steroid toxicity in dermatomyositis. It's really quite high. Very high rates of serious infection uh, um, in pneumonia, hospitalizable infections. Very high rates of sudden, quick osteonecrosis even after two, three months of high-dose steroids. So I give them a high dose, but I take it down real quick. The point being that when you treat inflammatory myositis, it can take really up to eight to 12 weeks for them to clinically improve. They will improve chemically much faster, but clinically they may take as long as eight to 12. She's already on her way. I don't think she's out of the woods yet. I think we'll see the re remainder of her improvement with time, but she's going to stay on leflunamide and methotrexate, and now I'm rapidly taping her, tapering her steroids. Um, she's going to go down to 30 for two weeks, then 20 for two weeks, then 10, and then I'm going to see her and hopefully get her off sometime thereafter. Again, these cases can be exciting, difficult, challenging. Um, I guess I, I was concerned that maybe she wasn't going to drop her CK because there was an, inter, an, an interval CK assessment that was still in the teens, like, I don't know, 13,000 or something like that. And anyway, she suddenly sort of turned around. Um, exciting case. Thought you should hear about it. Look at roomnow.live for registration.